Hi, everybody. Michelangelo Badio here. Yes, with the No Boundaries live multi-stream. We're multi-streaming from Facebook and YouTube. So Facebook and YouTube in real time. Uh, let's see, how's everything looking here? Great. Uh, I want to start with uh, just saying hello to a couple people online. Uh, the shout outs. Okay, there we go. Hey, Denny, now now we're looking at the screen. Hey, JD. Broccoli. There's uh, Denny. I'd also like to say hello to Tanya, Electric, uh, Alexis, Patrick, uh, Kevin, uh, Brett, Nick, uh, and then Miss Metal, too. Uh, and then uh, Savannah, hello. Oh, Sasha. Yes, hello. How are you? I called you Miss Metal. And uh, so when I look over here, I'm actually seeing all the questions and people. Uh, hey, Terry, good day. So uh, Charles, Nate, Russ, Russ Medley, hey. How you doing, Russ? So we've got a lot of people online. Now, uh, this week, I'm going to talk about, I touched on it last week, but I'm going to elaborate on this more because I had a lot of private messages, especially about this, like how really, how do you practice to, you know, how do I practice to maintain my super quickness? Now, uh, before I go into that, which I will in, in depth, I want to talk a little bit about the guitar that I'm playing today. Uh, Sawtooth, I've got my notes here. Sawtooth sponsors the show, Chromacast Music Products, and also Go DPS. And uh, what I'm using, this is one of my uh, first signature guitars. It is the Sawtooth STM24 in satin black. Now we released this guitar almost a year ago, and this is actually the prototype to it. So, and and the funny thing is, you're seeing a lot of. I'm not saying we invented this. I don't mean that. But every not many people were 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 making this a color and, and using the satin black finish. It's actually takes more to do this than it does a regular finish. And uh, now you're seeing a ton of people with these. And this is very reasonably priced. 24 frets of doom, death, destruction! And then uh, it just sounds amazing. So you can hear it. Now I have, you know, I'm using my signature to that. Three watts. So it just sounds amazing. So you have the, the bridge pickup. You have the bridge pickup. The neck pickup. the focus somebody wrote the focus we need to focus this uh anyway the focus is a little uh um uh, no, no, we're not going to stop the live stream. You know what? We forgot to do that. We're dealing with everything else. I'll tell you, the only way to do it is you'd have to sit down here. <laughs> of okay. Okay, we're going to refocus. I said, you know what? We don't care because I feel like Wayne's World. Excellent. Yes, we're in our basement. Horror, bro. We like the focus is a little off, bro, because we smoked a few really good buds before he came off. It's like Indica's like dripping with resin, bro. I'm stoned. He looked at focus to me, but I guess it isn't. So hold on. We're going to focus this bad boy. Okay. This is Adam. Okay, we have to wait. There we go. Okay, it's so slow. Um, hold on, let me look at the camera. Ooh, there we go. Okay, that looks, let's check it out. Okay, it looks good. All right. I feel really good now. It's like 
everything is so inspiring, man. I feel like playing David Gilmore, man. Like, comfortably buzz. I'm gonna do a parody. Hello. I've smoked some good weed. Anyway, I can't do that. Because first of all, I don't smoke pot. I can't say that I never tried it back in the day, but I realize I even get stranger than I already am when I'm smoking pot, which is why I don't smoke it. Anyway, it's nice and focus. And you know, it's better to have the live stream and focus than go, we have to be like totally professional, man, and just let it slide. And we could, or we could do, we could say, it's not out of focus. It's perfectly in focus. It's your phone. It's your computer. It's not ours. We are perfect. We control you. We are the ones that are in. So anyway, but it was out of focus. You were right now. It looks perfect. OK, uh, yeah, my, my, foot, my fingers always blur. Uh, one of, so anyway, I was talking a little bit about the guitar. And you know, one of the you know, missions of Sawtooth is you know, you're not going to get a better value guitar for the money. And you know, I've said this over and over, but it's just worth repeating over and over. Um, we want to increase the amount of people that play guitar, you know, because very early in the live streams, I kind of equated the music industry like a big pizza. Okay, so, you know, you have your different guitar companies and music companies, and each of these companies has the slice of the pizza. But what each company is trying to do is take away from another one to make their slice bigger. And hey, that's business. I get that. But there's a little difference in the sawtooth mentality of this. Yeah, we for sure we want to take uh, make a bigger slice. I mean, who wouldn't? That would be stupid not to. But we want to make the guitars the best value, that you get the most features for the least amount of money. So it makes people who might not be able to afford a thousand or two thousand dollar guitar, but get a guitar that really is valued at $1,000 with the features. So what we're doing is we're trying to make that pizza bigger, not just take a bigger slice, but make it bigger. In other words, make more people get involved in this. And I can't say enough about the company. Now also too, you know, we released a limited edition double guitar. This is actually the prototype right uh, here. And then I'm getting my production model in. Uh, they made one for me as well. But we're getting low on these, but there's still a few left. So if you are on the fence, and you know, a lot of people say, well, man, you know, I can barely play one, or I'd never be able to play left-handed. The price is very reasonable. And if you were ever thinking about thinking outside the box and trying something, this is your chance. And I also want to see what you can do. And, you know, I want to see what you guys can do with the double guitars. So anyway, so do they ship to Canada? Yes. Uh, let's see. Yeah, somebody wrote, oh, I deserve a better guitar. I played on an Ibanez once. Give me a break. You know, don't come to that. It's just so stupid to say stuff like that. Uh, you know, because my, my tone is sometimes in my fingers. And I guarantee anybody here, if you didn't hear, uh, if you didn't see what I played and I played an Ibanez, yeah, it would sound good. Is it going to sound better than this? No. And I'm sorry, but, you know, that's just the way it is. And, uh, you know, but I have to admit, um, I'm of the mind where be courteous. And, you know, if you talk like that, I'm actually going to delete that comment. And I don't want to say anything more about it. 99.9% of all the comments are great. But it's just rude, you know, to, to say stuff like that. It's, it's not necessary. You know, maybe you're unhappy with your own life. And so, uh, but here's, I want to talk a little bit about how I practice. Now, one of the things that I've made a science about is picking. Even, and then Troy Grady overanalyzed it. He even did stuff that I didn't even know I did. Uh, uh, you know, analyze my playing. But I made a science of technique. And if you understand my methodology, I don't prefer one technique over the other. And, you know, and now, there, now there's a thing, you know, like for a while in the 90s. They're not doing their fancy, you man. They're like not cool. If you want to pick up chicks, bro, you better not do our visuals. They don't dig our visuals. Like, too many notes in, like, a sequence, man. So he 
used to practice it. Do you hear how they go? I used to practice that 1,000 times a day. And you know what? I don't regret it at all. And, uh, but, you know, I was goofing around with that. Uh, you know, but, you know, uh, about, you know, arpeggios being up. But literally, critics criticized guitarists for sweep picking in the 90s. I thought, are you guys idiots? I mean, what is wrong with you? Uh, you know, you would never see this in orchestral music. Can you imagine? No, like we don't play the, the ornaments like you and Sebastian Bach played them because this is the 20th, 21st century. And, and, and uh, we're so evolved and like, like we, are the, we are the elites. So we, we don't do that anymore. Oh, really? Uh, work for Bach, work for Beethoven too. You, you, uh, orchestral and classical thinking is not like guitar. Now there's a thing where don't bend. Don't or this. You have lost the grand prize game. Those are the bud stuff. So anyway, um, but there, there's you know, there's always a critic. But they're not the ones, I, the, the big picture is this, and I'm making jokes about it because I think it's ludicrous. You know, what if I would have stopped playing arps in the 90s and 20 years later, I was so rusty, it's like. That sounds kind of good. I, I'm making fun. I'm making fun. Even with the string dampener, it's noisy. And so, but in, in orchestral music, I, and you would never, hear a classical violinist say one technique is worse than the other because what if you need that technique to play a piece of music? And it's the same thing in electric guitar. So when people criticize a technique, that's not criticizing a song. See, uh, people are completely, and look, you're allowed to criticize a technique. I'm not telling you to do anything you don't want to do. But with a song, that's something that a human has an emotion, emotional connection to. I cannot make a person like me. I cannot make myself like a person I don't like. I can't, you know, I can try and be courteous. I can't make myself like songs I really don't like. We just get feels for things. But the technique is only a means to the end. And that's how I've always thought about it my whole life. Now, so when I practice alternate picking, I'm practicing the technique, how I use it, John Petrucci uses it one way, Ingve uses it another, Aldimiola uses it another. So I separate these techniques, or sweep picking, like the arpeggio. I became really good at sweep picking and economy picking, and, and because I mastered alternate first, I still feel that alternate picking is absolutely the hardest. And in more than tapping, Ta I love tapping too, but the reason why I think alternate picking is the hardest, it's one pick per one note. And really, if you watch a violinist and they're doing this really fast, that's alternate picking on guitar. It is one note, one, one bow. I mean, when you see these violins go <laughs> that is the equivalent to alternate picking, every single note. You are using both hands, both arms. It's like, ah! It's almost like, Beavis and butter. And so when you're using economy, you're economizing that motion of your picking hand. So your fretboard hand is flying, but your picking hand is doing a lot less work. It's a lot less strenuous, hence the name economy. So now I'm going to show you a little bit. Um, what I do, yeah, violin frets, uh, no. But the, see, one of the things that makes a violin so unique is that it is tuned in fifths. Okay, so, so the intervals between strings are higher, which means you can make wider jumps easier. But there's a, a phrase we used to use in, in school at the university called the speaking length. And what they meant is like the speaking length of the instrument. The speaking length of a guitar is long. I have 24 frets, longer than 22, 21. Uh, now we're using a wider scale length, but Sawtooth has its own scale length, believe it or not. It's between a Gibson and a Fender, and it's not a PRS. Sawtooth has its own. And we also use medium jumbo frets, so if you're a purist, 
and you like thinner frets, like if you play more traditional, great. If you use jumbo frets, uh, you're going to like these too. And one of the things I've kind of realized about jumbo frets, I used to be a huge fan of them. I'm not so much anymore because they're bigger and thicker, and actually you can get into intonation problems if you press down too hard, where these are medium jumbo, so they're not as high, not as wide, and when you press down, you don't have as much territory to cover. Okay, now I'm going to show you. What I do is this. The main way I practice fast, especially now, is I use drum software, but it's just as easy to use a metronome. I, I separate the techniques, and I showed this exercise last week. I'm going to show it again, then I'm going to show you a new one. And what this does is uh, you play short bursts, short exercises. You don't, now, you can elongate that and play longer and longer and longer for endurance. But what you want to do, you want to feel the need for speed. You want to let it engulf you. You want to feel the wind in your face. Even though it's not windy here, if you smoke enough dope, bro, you're going to feel a lot of stuff. And so the point is this, that what I do is I set up a, a, a very simple drum program, and I start at 185 BPM, and I play in 16th notes. So it's one E and a two. So every half count, there's two counts. And in school, we used to go one E and a two E and a three E and a, but it's like that, 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 because it's very important to know with BPM what is the note value or the duration of the note. Uh, it's basically, it's not a rule, but it's generally accepted. You do 16th notes, or if you're at slower tempos, 16th note triplets. Okay, we're going to start at 185, and I'm going to show you the riff. Okay? One, two, three, eight. slow but what I did if we can st stop it and what I played is this I went all alternate picking I'm specifically using alternate picking and this is a really great exercise because uh, the and I talked about it last week and uh, also um, you're gonna be getting free some free things to signing up for metal method that at metalmethod.com. sign up for the metal method uh, newsletter and uh, we are we're, I have a lot of instructional programs through them uh, but we're gonna start showing things like this watch I play this slowly I've uh, not hit that yet now why is this exercise good one strict alternate picking your back I call it backtracking So you're moving down strings, but you're moving up like. Then you're using an open fret grouping. So then you stop. Then sometimes I'll go if it's really fast. Like, then I'll end it. So then I'll go. And with that, and it's just so play 185 again, Adam, and I'll show you how I do it. One, two, three, four. Stop. No, no, you keep playing. Keep the drums playing. But you don't have to continue to do it. Yeah, now you can stop it. What I do is I play these short riffs, and then I start making it up as I go along. I go, -le 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 -le. let's move it to uh, now, we're going to move it up to 190. And same idea here. We're going to just gradually bring it up to 220. Wow. Now this is five. No, keep playing. Then. So 
now what I do is this. Giving yourself that break allows, it's like you feel this tempo. And especially with a simple drum program like that, do, bah, do, do, bah, do. and then uh, I have them like for about 15, 20 minutes a piece. So we just play drop the, uh, drop the cursor, you know, drop the mouse. And so you can put it in the middle. But what I do is I warm up to this. And 185 to me is like, that's cruising. And so, but it synchronizes my hands. It gives me a legitimate, realistic, finite tempo. I know exactly. Because, you know, sometimes when, when you're feeling good, like you've had that fifth cup of coffee and it's only 6.45 in the morning, you're like, I feel good today! Oh! You know, and so you could, you could warm up thinking, well, I'm fast, bro. It's like fast. It's like faster than faster than God, dude. It's like faster than the flash, bro. And so, you know, you could play, but you really have no judge. I mean, first of all, you're amped. Uh, so you might be going faster, but what if you're not? Like like the days, like sometimes if you wake up and you're just really tired and you want to play or you're, you're feeling mentally and physically fatigued or one of the two, um, you're actually playing and you play 185 BPM and it feels kind of like a struggle to get there. That's why it's so important to have a measuring stick. Okay, we were at 190. Let's put it to 195. Now I'm using the neck a position I don't have to. I love the tone of it. There we go. So anyway, there's 195. Now, what I do is I'll let this go. Like I said, I keep this thing going for 10 minutes. So I do these really short bursts because it calibrates everything. And it also doesn't tire you out because if you're kind of... what happens is you're going to start getting tired in there. There's a thing called lactic acid and it gets in your hands. And like Joey's like, this sucks. Oh, he's talking like Beavis and Butthead. Okay. All right. I'm back to being Joey here. Now listen, I'm the star of this show. When I play fast, it's fast. Now, so what you do is this. When you're playing like this, play short bursts short bursts of quickness and stop, let your hand come down. Then do it again. This is what I do. I've never been hurt, okay? So I think I've come from the school of experience on this. And, you know, I mean, how many thousands of shows have I done? I don't even know, 58 countries? And I'm not being arrogant about this. I have one area of expertise, guitar and music, you know, about music. And, but my guitar playing is still really fast and accurate because I practice what I preach. And what I preach is uh, princi are principles that I learned in school and relating to other instruments. Because, see, that's why, I, it, you know, it upsets me a little bit when I hear people criticizing a technique. And it's not that, in some ways, I don't mind because then don't practice it. Then I know something you don't, okay? But, that, but the other side of me is saying, why are you trying to hurt yourself? Why are you trying to take knowledge that is there for you to benefit and you don't want to benefit from it. You want to criticize it. It that never made sense to me. And so, but you know, I can't tell people how to think. And so now what did we do 195, right? Yeah. So let's bump it up to 200. Now we're starting to get in the shred zone here. Same thing. Now use the uh, bridge position for the purists. Watch how I do it. Now keep playing. When you play short bursts like that, 
it gives your mind, your hands, everything to focus on that tempo. And also, that's how, or, when you learned classical piano and they gave you speed exercises, the Cerny School of Velocity, the Hannon book uh, for the virtuoso pianist, Schmidt preparatory exercises. A lot of what they did, they took, not everything, but they took short exercises. It's like we used to say when I took French class, like, écoutez et répétez. Listen and repeat, okay? Repeat these short bursts. Repeat it over and over, working, and all of a sudden you get this feel. If we went back down to 185 right now, it would feel slow. Let's kick it up to 205. Same thing on. Now watch. So, same thing. Okay. Now, see, then what I do is I put it up to 210, 220. We're going to do that next. But when you do those short bursts, and it can make up your own, uh, it especially works good for economy. Now, I'm going to play all, on the 210, I'm going to play alternate, and then I'm going to switch to economy. Economy you can even go faster. And that's why economy is such a good tool to learn because in your arsenal, and again, it's my, my saying, you know, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. You know, and, and uh, so anyway, let's bump it up to 210. Bump it. Now play 210 again. Sorry. I want to show you a little. Yeah, keep playing that. Now watch this with economy. Here's alternate. Economy. Now, I was playing way faster than 210. Now we're going to kick it up to 220. But you see, I'm warming myself up just by doing this. And it's so beneficial. Look, we've been doing this for like 10 or 15 minutes. It just, it, it's like, Joey's like, ah! And Robert's like, <laughs> Robert is angry. You know the scene in the Hulk in the first Avengers where, where I think it's uh, one of the guys says, uh, oh, you know, we could use the Hulk now. You know, and, and he goes, you know, and my secret is, I'm always angry. Smash! <laughs> See, here's Robert's secret. He's always angry. He's so angry he can't talk. Well, one day he's got to pick. Now, he can't talk, but he doesn't talk anyway. But he can't move his mouth like Joey. Joey's a star. But what happens is that you calibrate this, and these short riffs work. These short bursts, because you feel the knee. You feel what speed feels like but you're doing it in a pretty much a scientific way. You've got a, a, a real measurement. Okay, try 220, or let's do 20. I'm gonna use the bridge pickup. Now you can start this. the end. 
So even playing at 220, switching to economy, it relaxes Robert's hand here. So it's almost like he's in cruise control. Because, you know, when you do 220, I mean, people can play a lot faster than that. I can play faster than that. But I wanted to illustrate real, real things for you today. You can do 185 to 220, but do short riffs like that. And we will be showing this exercise on the Metal Method, uh, uh, you know, when you sign up for the Metal Method uh, mailing list. Now, one thing I want to talk about too, you know, we've I've talked a lot about this exercise, but I have many instructional programs through Metal Method, metalmethod.com. If you want to really learn all the details and, and you know, I practice what I preach. I, I practice what I teach a and it's enabled me to have a really long career and to be able to play at a, at a high level, you know, and uh, I have to admit I had some problems in my house. Some of the electrical stuff went out. We've had really bad storms here. So I had a guy here today and he couldn't find. So all afternoon, instead of being able to play guitar and work, I was dealing with this and uh, they couldn't find one of the problems of everything got fixed except one. And I'm not making excuses. So what you're seeing here is me warming up, literally warming up. I didn't warm up before the warm up and, and before I'm showing this to you, but it really works great. My fingers feel good. Joey is definitely feeling good. And so, and so is Robert. And in the brain, it, it like puts everything in sync. It's kind of like you have these three parts. You have your two hands and your mind to control them. Although Joey would argue he's the one controlling it, but that's another story. But you, you have to sync all three together. And then again, a technique is a technique. David Gilmore plays music. You are not going to go and see an instructional video by David Gilmore. Uh, he hasn't done it. You don't see one by Paul McCartney. Uh, you know, and so, you know, these are songwriters, they're artists. But, if, you know, people like Paganini, uh, musicians of the past, did both. You know, uh, Bach wrote the two and three part inventions for students. They were pieces to write to learn how to play. Okay, so, and, and see, when you do these short riffs, it's kind of like taking it a measure at a time. Now, um, I want to go back to the, this guitar. I am using the least expensive guitar in, in my Sawtooth signature line. Uh, this is the M24 Satin Black. I just love this guitar. Canadian maple. I like the big fret inlays. Uh, you know, the big black inlays, I mean. It's a fixed bridge. I, you know, the white pickups. This is 100% stock. And I keep this guitar in my studio all the time. And I love it uh, here because there's no locking trim. So right now we're in concert pitch E. Uh, I can tune it down. I work with bands that... Uh, uh, you know, drop a whole step so I can tune this guitar down a whole step and practice what I need to do up a half step to E flat from there. Uh, it's really a versatile guitar and it's super lightweight. I mean, I'm a pretty tall guy. Uh, I'm about, uh, I'm six feet tall, which is around 182, 183, maybe 183 centimeters. So I'm pretty tall. And uh, this guitar is really light. I don't need it this light on my shoulder, but I love it this light. It, it's got a big sound and it's super light. Uh, I can't say enough about this. I mean, all the Sawtooth signatures are great, but this is kind of like one of my go-to guitars. I always seem to like pick this one up and rock out with it. It sounds great. And, and uh, you know, it's just, it's so easy to use, you know, no locking trim and it's very, very reasonably priced. Uh, now also, the double guitar you see behind me, this is the first time ever a company in all the years I've been playing guitar, I've been playing the double guitar literally since the, the mid 80s. And I had one before that of my own invention of the right handed guitar one way, left handed guitar another way. So I've been playing it for a long time. Not once ever until Sawtooth has anybody been able to actually build a production model. And so we built a limited edition run of 50. Many of them are sold, but there's still some left. Now we're, you know, they're gonna be sold out. But I highly suggest this is a very reasonable price. It comes with the MAB string dampener. Uh, the way it fits together, this is the prototype. So I'm gonna be having the production model coming in next week, so I'll be able to demonstrate that live. The mechanism, you just go like this, it's two male rods, poof, and you lock it. It's awesome. It takes literally a couple seconds to put together, a couple seconds to take apart. The case is really cool. That's not the case for that guitar, but the guitars fit 
like this. They face each other. So it's a little bit bigger than a keyboard case. In fact, a lot of times when I carry my flight case around on tour with the double in it, people say, what is that, a keyboard? Because it's a little bigger than a guitar case, but not much. Uh, these doubles are great. I used this on tour before COVID for over 40 shows. It was stable. It sounded great, it stayed in tune, and it's also the lightest one. And we wanted to make it look a little different. You know, I've always had pointy doubles, which I like. You know, don't get me wrong, I think they're cool. I came up with it. But we wanted to try something that was more traditional. And I thought, how cool, tellies? It's like so unexpected. You know, like, you know, like why? Pourquoi in French? Why not? You know, the, we're the, I wrote a song called No Boundaries. I lived No Boundaries. No Boundaries. Of course, you have to stay within the law, but you don't have to. Music only has rules, uh, and the rule, because those rules were an, att an attempt to explain what sounded good. And you act, music theory literally was taken from, you know, the era of Bach and and where, where you could, you know, it started kind of with them, but not, not really him. But, but, you know, we can use him as a perfect example because there are certain rules that he seemed to go by. And really what they were is it, the music sounded so good. And we actually have a mathematical explanation for some of this stuff. Music is math. And, uh, you know, even feeling, you can play notes higher. Uh, in volume, 0 to 127, you can move it within the framework of a measure. This is all a mathematical calculations. You can actually program feeling. It's a weird concept, but it's done. That's why music translates so well to computers. Well, you know, with the double guitar and with the things that I do, I know this stuff. And so I kind of, I always try to base it on, you know, like what would the masters do? And, and, and what in the grand scheme of things makes the most sense? Not what's popular in October or what's popular in January or December. That's, leave that to the critics. Nobody remembers the critics that said they didn't like sweep arpeggios in the 90s. It's meaningless stuff. They, and now people just want clicks. They want numbers. So people will say outlandish things. And not only because they believe it, sometimes they don't. They just want they want the response, and I understand that, and I don't criticize that, but when it comes to the music, and it comes from guitar design, I mean, I've got a lot of experience in both. This double guitar rules, it's awesome. And I'm gonna be playing it, I played it on tour over 30 shows before COVID shut my tour down, and I'm gonna be playing it again uh, for as many shows as, as we can get booked. And so I can't say enough about the guitar. Uh, again, with this too, I keep it in kind of a damp environment. Um, I'm here downstairs below my house in my studio, so it was once just the basement, you know, but I had it fixed for a long time. Um, you know, it used to look much different because I had equipment all over and posters, but this area is the video area. So that's why it looks sparse because it's literally like a stage in my own house, literally. And so I can, I can move the cameras there and I've got a really nice area to film. I could put a drummer there, I could put a, a band, we'd have to be close, but it's a pretty big area uh, back there. So anyway, I've talked about this, I've talked about the limited edition double guitar. I can't say enough about Metal Method. Doug Marks and I have been close friends for a long time, but we've worked together. It's not just, you know, I have a lot of friends that I don't work with. Doug is just brilliant at what he does. I mean, every Metal Method program, we always use three cameras. The color spot on, the production is spot on. The production is the highest quality. It's kind of like when you watch a movie from a while ago, but it still looks really great because it was filmed right the first time. That's how the old Metal Method programs are. And, uh, you, know, don't, you know, we put out a lot of content. I've got a lot of instructional programs. Speed Kills, the iconic one about speed. What you can do is you can take the Speed Kills exercises and apply them to the drum programs that I talked to you about, or a metronome, just 185, 170, start out at 140, start off with one that you're comfortable and move it up in increments of five BPM. If you want, move it up to at 10. It doesn't matter, what, but start at a comfortable level where you can control what you're doing. Then you can bring it up to reckless abandon. And so you can, but there are no boundaries to this. And there really are no rules. I mean, we make rules for these. But there are certain things that have been consistent for centuries. And what I'm telling you in Speed Kills, Speed Kills works. It's the culmination of my uh, studying music. Uh, 
centuries past, way before any of us was born. Someone uh, asked a question. Yeah. If you want to talk about a product. They wanted to know what your string dampener is. Oh, the string dampener? Yeah. Um, yeah. What's, uh, somebody asked about this. That's a good. Now, Chromacast sells these. Let me show you. Here's without the string dampener. When you put the string dampener on, watch. See how it locks the strings? Now, these are adjustable. I put it down on the second fret. But see, what it does is it's like a fret wrap, except I came up with this before the fret wraps. Um, I like this much better because a fret wrap, if you have a locking trim, you have to put it on the first fret. This you can lift up. So, see, what it enabled me to do is this. What? So this blocks extraneous string noise. If I didn't have that, and I'm playing up here, and you hear me moving around, you can hear all this stuff when I do this. Now I'm hitting the car. You're going to hear a little bump, but when I'm doing this on stage, on the top string, there's five open strings. And if I'm playing two guitars, what's going to stop those strings? Don't say it. Okay, so anyway, you can play it like this. And this is what the string dampener does. It dampens the strings. And it enabled me to play the double guitar, but it is perfectly capable especially with tapping it works amazing for tapping too and so see like when you see a lot of people using those fret wraps they'll move it like really high on the guitar <laughs> see i can take this off and when i take it off i cannot do that with a fret wrap. You can't do it. Where's it gonna go, bro? It's like stuck. It's like stuck to your guitar, dude. It's like putting a Dunkin' Donut around your guitar, bro. Where's it gonna go? You gotta eat the donut to get rid of this. Well, you're not gonna eat the fret wrap, but it's Velcroed on. So you've got this moving thing. It's stuck. Now, with a nut like this, and you don't have this, you can move it over. But that also means you're gonna have to Play, you get better work on it. See, with the string dampener, you can just literally, here, I, I hit this really hard. You, you can literally just take it up, put it down, and it's so quick. Now, granted, I play clean anyway, but I love using this. When I play in the studio, I use this. Uh, I use it a lot live. Oh, yeah, well, if you play on the neck, well, that's easier. Well, let's play on the bridge. Perfectly clean. You know, when I did tribute to Randy. Um, I use my I use my uh, bridge position a lot, and then instead of doing the tapping, I went. <laughs> and so, uh, but you can buy one. Um, you can get those. Uh, maybe they can put. Uh, yeah, the str somebody wrote when doing eight finger tapping, but these work great. I mean, you hear it here. You know, they work perfectly. And the great thing about this is you don't, and they're, they're inexpensive, first of all. Uh, you know, we, and, uh, but they're, they're really cool and, and they work. I mean, if they didn't work, I mean, I, you can see I have them on my double guitar because I use them. And, uh, but it does the same thing as a fret wrap, only this was invented before I have a patent on this. And it does it better, in my opinion. Now, some people say, well, I like my fret wrap. Hey, you know, I've said this before. The only kind of wrap I like is like maybe like chicken with some ranch dressing in there. You know, a little lettuce and tomato. You know, a nice wrap. You know, a chicken wrap is a very good wrap. So, you know, unless you care to eat your fret wrap, uh, I highly recommend the... The MAB string dampener. Why? Because it, it, 
I'm an elitist. It's like I, I'm evolved, and, and like my opinion is it matters more because I like jazz, and, and jazz is of course the highest art form there is, except for bar talk. Why? Well, I, I don't know, but it just sounds cool because it's a composer, but I can talk in a club about how great and smart that I am. So just goofing around, uh, one thing, but these things work, and you know it's fun to joke. But you got to do the work first and laugh. And so, uh, but they work really great. That's a great question. Someone who wrote, is it heavy? Uh, no, uh, not heavy at all. And, uh, uh, you know, it, I mean, the guitar is super light. You're going to be shocked. This thing is really light, and I love it. But the tone is thick. Uh, it's just made really well. And, and uh, the string dampeners, you know, it doesn't require drilling on your guitar. Certain guitars, you have to take the truss rod cover off. That's about it. Uh, and you just slide it under the strings. Works for seven strings, six strings. But uh, again, I, I want to say that, you know, I enjoy doing this. I've been doing this live stream for well over a year and a half. And, uh, uh, you know, now we can multi-stream it, you know, and it's going to get, you know, we're going to keep evolving. You know, I've got really good cameras now and uh, for this. And, you know, it started off with just... You know, I used my iPhone, and I didn't even have it set on a high resolution. Why? Why? I don't know. Because I'm a guitarist. And, and so, but, uh, you know, I really enjoy doing this, and it never ends. You know, even if I talk about a topic again, so what? You've got to constantly work on this. You know, what you don't use, you lose. So if you snooze, you're going to lose. And uh, you've, got to, you've got to constantly keep up the work. And what I show you, and even my practice methods have evolved over the years, but the core ideas and the methodology has not evolved in a sense that it was right from the beginning. It's not all my ideas. I, you never heard me say, I invented this and I invented this. Yes, I invented this. Yes, I invented this. Yes, I invented that. And I'll say it. But I didn't invent the idea of doing short exercises. That came from people that were a lot smarter than me centuries before anyone that lives on this earth was born. Unless you're a vampire, but that's a whole other story. Well, let's see, in 1556, that was a, okay, I'm not saying that I was there. All right, anyway, now, but the point is, is that when, when there's intelligence behind what you do and there's a method to the madness and there's, you know, what is the goal? What is the accomplishment that you're going to derive from this? Uh, that's what I used to ask myself. I don't like to do exercises just to do it unless I'm watching a movie. Sometimes I just like to watch movies and go, yes, yes, kill them, torch them, stab them. I'll just play. Why? It's mindless doodling just to keep my fingers moving. That's a, another thing, but you can't rely on that because there is the method to the madness is just to break up the routine. But if you do the short exercises that are on Speed Kills and all my instructional programs and you add BPM to this, how I stay fast. Anyway, I'm Michelangelo Badio for Sawtooth Guitars and Musical Instruments, Chromacast Music Products, and Go DPS Music Live. Also, get the Go DPS Music Live app. It is awesome. There are concerts, there's photos, there, there's discounts on gear, uh, there's, there's you know, playthroughs, there's, we did a great acoustic playthrough. There's so much cool stuff that Sawtooth is involved with. You know, we're a cutting edge company and, and uh, based in Southern California and uh, you know, we just keep moving forward. Uh, hybrid guitars, double guitars, an app. You know, not a lot of uh, guitar companies have their own app that is designed to help you, and it's free. Anyway, Michelangelo Badio, see ya. Joey, bye. Robert, 